we saw last week that Daniel Pantaleo uh, was not convicted for the murder of Eric Garner. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that case, uh, Daniel Pantaleo is the NYPD police officer that put an illegal chokehold on Eric Garner in the streets of New York City uh, a few years ago. I'm I'm having a hard time remembering exactly when it was. I feel like, I, I think it was like 20. 2014 2015 somewhere in there but it was like a couple years ago so this has been an ongoing case and the person that filmed it the cops kept fucking with this guy and he is i believe in prison for filming that incident but the cop that killed eric garner we would recently found out will not be convicted of any crimes uh and the reason why eric garner was put into an illegal chokehold uh, by Daniel Pantaleo was because Eric Garner was selling cigarettes. So the only the only reason I think that Daniel Pantaleo would be doing this is he he looked at Eric Garner and was just like cigarettes cause emphysema and lung cancer and it causes a lot of of breathing disabilities. So I'm gonna show you what it feels like to smoke a cigarette, buddy. And then he, and then he put him in a chokehold and it's like, that's, you could have just, you could have just clockwork oranged a bunch of th truth videos instead of doing that Pantaleo. Like that's a much better form of justice is just like get him into a Best Buy and uh, strap him into a chair and, you know, like hold his eyes open and then just make him like watch all of the truth videos from like the late 90s into now. And there's a portion of those truth videos that are just super fucked up. Like they went real dark. They went real dark with it. You know, like that's a much better way of telling somebody to be like, hey, there's a lot of problems with that product that you're selling, buddy. Huh? Let me show you what those problems really are. You, you, you son of a bitch. But it's, it's like cigarettes, right? Like he's selling Lucy cigarettes on the street. Really, the per, like the people that should comment on this is like, what does Philip Reynolds and uh, or, or Philip Morris and RJ Reynolds think about this? Do they have any comments about this? Were they like, yeah, this guy's bringing down our empire. He's bringing down our empire from fucking Staten Island. This guy's a threat. That guy's a threat to the to the empire that is Philip Morris. How dare he? How dare he take down the the pride of tobacco with his Lucy cigarette empire? How dare he, that son of a bitch? But it sprung up the debate about police brutality again. And there's a uh, people are very, uh, uh, man, they go kind of to the extremes on it, right? Like, Anybody that talks about it, uh, about the uh, the issue of police brutality, they kind of go like one way or the other. Um, and, and I and the reason why this is sort of in the forefront of my mind is because of two different things that have come up uh, over the last few, uh, last probably just last week, really. Uh, the first is that I was on Redacted Tonight VIP. No big deal, you guys. No big deal. Made my big TV appearance uh, on a on a super awesome political show. Uh, it's not, no big deal. Hey, uh, I'm still me, you know, I'm still a regular guy, just like you, you know, it's just now I am famous and I am arbitrarily signing everybody's breasts. You know, that's just, that's the price of fame. You have to sign everybody's breasts no matter where you go. But, uh, on, on my, uh, on the episode of Redacted Tonight VIP that I was featured on, uh, Lee Camp, host of the show, Lee Camp had, uh, Alex Vitel on that show. Uh, and um, he talks a lot about uh, alternatives to policing, uh, asking the questions of do we need a police force in general? Can we do without it? Is society ready to, to police itself? Um, it's, th those are important questions that we should ask. Uh, and, and I'm glad that somebody's bringing that into the conversation, right? And, and none of it was just like, we need to ban police. We got to abolish all the cops. We got to get rid of them. We got we to gotta put them all in a crate. And then to ship them into the undisputed zone of the ocean and let them just have it out in a crate, right? Like, no one's making these crazy over-the-top ideas. Uh, but in the comment section, it was very evident that, like, people are going one way or the other. Either they're like, we need cops, we need more cops, because 
law and order is important you know that's that's the most important thing is law and order and we need those cops to enforce law and order at every level at the and and as intensely as they wanted to right is if somebody's jaywalking you drag him off the streets and then you beat his legs in that's what you do to stop the the unlawful and unorderly behavior of jaywalking like they have that end of the spectrum uh, and then you have the all cops are bastards, uh, which, which to me, both of those extremes are are absurd. Like I don't buy into it. And the other the other th reason why this is in the forefront is because um, in my hometown in Pittsburgh, we had a little bit of an issue uh, where it kind of devolved into uh, into this all cops are bastards argument. Um, you know, where there was a, a coffee shop that had a little bit of a debacle with one of its employees not serving a cop. Um, and look, here's the thing, right? If you're a private business owner, if you're a small business owner, you have the right to refuse service to whoever you choose to refuse service to. Um, and uh, it kind of gets into the murky gray area of like, okay, what if it's like an entire group of people, right? Like what if, what if there, there is a business owner and it's like, you know, like what, what happened with the, with the, the baker in Indiana that was just like, no gays, no gays, can't do it. I'm picturing them having sex in my mind and it's freaking me out and it's fucking up my cakes. You know, like what if it's what if it's that end of things? Like what if what if the per like that is that that's this discrimination, I think like individual. OK, if it's like one person, then you're kind of judging the, the person on the individual basis. But if it's like the entire group of people, you know, like like if you're just like no Jews. No Jews ever in my store, in my cake shop, all right? I'm picturing them having sex, and it's fucking up my cakes. I'm drawing stars everywhere. The whole, every cake has a star for no fucking reason. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> at that point, it's discrimination, right? Like, that's what it is. So if you're not going to serve an entire group of people, uh, I think it turns into discrimination. But if it's just like an asshole, like if, if somebody comes into the store and is you know, flipping over all the cupcakes, you know, uh, if, if they're, if they're just, if they're licking all the cakes or, 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 or they're, they're putting their finger in their, uh, in their mouth and dipping it into the coffee beans, uh, and they just happen to be gay or they just happen to be Jewish or they just happen to be a cock, then you can fucking kick that guy out because that person is being an asshole. <laughs> don't, don't wet willy a fucking cupcake. Don't do that. That's that's rude. That's just rude. It doesn't matter who you are. You shouldn't be wet willying ex espresso or cupcakes or humans. Don't do that. Don't do that. But it brought up the issue, right? Like, do it, you know all, all cops are bastards, and uh, or or we just need law and order, and we gotta we gotta uh, we gotta put forward law and order by any means necessary, and. Um, Look, there's, there is a middle ground, there is a gray area, and it really boils down to this. Uh, it's, it's systems versus people. That's what it comes down to. I think cops are part of a, um, a system that has been proven to be uh, detrimental to the people that choose to be cops. Um, it, you know, it, and it does. And look, the people that end up turn, becoming cops, uh, are, they, they get like less than eight hours of de-escalation training. It's more about guns. Uh, it's more about shooting and accuracy and, and it's, and it's all this hyper aggressive stuff and, and they're hiring like ex military people, right? Like veterans they are hiring veterans. And I'm not saying like, nobody should hire veterans. Okay. I'm picturing them having sex and it's fucking up my day. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, okay? I'm, I'm saying that if you're a veteran, uh, perhaps going into another um, kind of a high-stress situation that involves weaponry and, uh, and tactical language and things like that, uh, if you're a veteran, especially one that has PTSD, this, th this might not be the, the direction to go um, unless the police departments are offering counseling and therapeutic services and um, de-escalation uh, training and things like that. Uh, but they're not, but they're not, they're not offering any of that sort of stuff, right? I, I was driving through North Carolina uh, a couple months ago and uh, I listened to, I listened to Spotify. Uh, I, uh, I have a, a mix that I listen to when I drive, but I don't have the premium service. My wife has the premium service. 
um, and uh, and uh, I I don't. You can take do with that information whatever you want, uh, but <laughs> I don't I don't have a, I, I, but so I get these ads right, and one of the biggest ads like driving through the entire state of North Carolina. Uh, all I kept hearing was the Charlotte Mecklenburg Poli uh, Police Department is hiring veterans specifically. If you're a veteran, join the Charlotte's Mecklenburg uh, and, and be a part of something, man. You're a part of something now, okay? That's you, you, you fucking veteran served in Iraq too, came home, and the government said, you know what? We're done. We're fucking done with you because that's what they do, right? And, and the cops into Charlotte's Mecklenburg area are like, hey, come join our family. We'll fucking give you a tank. We'll give you that tank you used to drive in in Afghanistan. You remember that tank? We got it. We got six of them. They're just fucking sitting there, and we got nobody that knows what to do with it, right? That's why they're hired veterans, because a lot of the, the military surplus shit that they get, they probably get, like, the people that they're training are just like, oh, my God, this is so intense. But if you get a veteran, they're like, fuck, yeah. That's what we, we need a rocket launcher, you know? We need that F-14 Tomcat that if there's a noise complaint, we'll be like, yeah, we're on our way. When you hear that sonic boom, that's us. That's us right there. <laughs> but that's what it is, you know? That's that's what they're doing, right? So, so... Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.